we're going to start with um, talking about the vocabulary that you're going to see coming up in topic number 13 in our Envision Math. Um, the first couple of things I want you to know um, are we're going to be discussing different types of shapes. We're going to be talking about plane shapes, which essentially is the same thing as two-dimensional shapes that you should already have some background knowledge on. Um, we're also going to be discussing three-dimensional shapes, which have a new name called solid shapes. So those kind of are interchangeable. So just so you know, a 2D shape is the same as a plane shape. And a 3D shape is the same as a solid shape. Um, these are the words that your math curriculum uses now. So we've had different curriculum in the past and maybe, maybe you've heard them referred to as these couple of things, but I want you to also know that this is the same, they're equivalent, and this is the way that we're going to be referring to them during this chapter. Um, I want to start with the two-dimensional or the plane shapes first. Um, there are going to be different attributes you're going to have to be looking for for these shapes. There's also going to be some drawing of these shapes, so you have to be familiar with the vocabulary that comes with them. Um, the first word I want to talk about is vertex. Um, a vertex is the same as um, where, the, where the lines intersect. So here's the vertex right here. Um, you can also see this as a plural word. Um, the plural of this V-E-R-T-I-C-E-S, vertices. If I was talking about, this is not a great looking triangle. If I was discussing this um, triangle, I would say that there are three vertices. Um, and I could just draw them like this, one, two, and three. Um, and I would just write <clears throat> three vertices to the side. V-E-R-T-I-C-E-S. Um, I'm not as super great at spelling that word. Sorry about that. Um, so vertices, just where these lines are intersecting those points that are on those shapes. Um, this is what we're talking about in conjunction with the plane shapes. <clears throat> the next thing that I want to talk about, the word you're going to come in contact with, is a quadrilateral. Um, you're also going to hear the word pentagon and hexagon a lot during this chapter. Um, I want to talk about this prefix quad. When you see this prefix, it means four. So a quadrilateral is a shape that has four sides. Quadrilateral. It's pretty long. Um, so it could refer to any shape that has four sides. It could be a shape like this, a shape like this. It could be a long and skinny rectangle. Um, it could be a diamond type shape. All of these have four sides, one, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. So they have that in common. I could group all of these the same and say, these are all quadrilaterals. All of them have four sides. Um, the next word is pentagon. Penta. It means five. So a pentagon is a shape that has five sides. Um, you'll notice that a lot of these have the word gone at the end. Pentagon, hexagon, polygon, um, octagon, nonagon, dodecagon. Like all of these are referring to shapes. So this gone at the end also tells you a clue that it's a shape. So if we were talking about pentagon and I tell you that the, the prefix penta means five, that just means it's a shape that has five sides. So a lot of times when you're thinking of a pentagon, you think of this shape that has kind of a, a resemblance to a house. It has five sides. I know that it's a pentagon. I know that this shape is closed. Um, there aren't any openings. I would not refer to this as a pentagon. This shape is not closed. It has one, two, three, four sides. Even if I draw a small little line right there, it's not a closed shape, meaning there's this opening here, so I can't call that a shape. Um, pentagon, it might come in different, I don't know, different configurations. I'm not sure. One, two, three, four, and I could put that there. This is also a pentagon. One, two, three, four, and five. 
And I just made up that shape. It doesn't have like a fancy name. If it does, I'm not sure what it is. But pentagon, a shape that has five sides. Um, the next word is hexagon. Um, the hexa is the six, so the hexagon. And I'm not sure if it's the hex or the hexa. I kind of just think it's the hex. I'm not really sure. But as far as the prefix goes, you just need to know that a hexagon has six sides. Um, cool way how to draw a hexagon if you're really struggling um, is to draw a circle, draw a line at the top, a line at the bottom, and then you can just do two sideways letter V's. If you erase the stuff in the middle, there you go. You've got a six-sided figure, which is a hexagon. One, two, three, four, five, and six. I've got six sides on that hexagon. Um, just to make sure you still remember about that vertex, if I was asked how many vertices does this have? One, two, three, four, five, and six. So we've got six vertices and six sides to this figure. This is a hexagon. It has six sides. Sometimes you could see hexagons that are shaped differently. Let's see. One, two, three, four. Five, ooh, here we go, six. This is also a hexagon. It has six sides. One, two, three, four, five, six. Um, when you're drawing out a figure, um, such as a polygon that has many different sides, when you're drawing out each line, that's another way you can count how many sides that it has. I just like putting these little lines on there so I make sure I counted each one only one time. Um, so hexagon. The next term I wanna discuss is a polygon. The prefix poly just means many sides, um, or many, I guess I should say. Um, the gon means the shape that has many sides. So we could say all of these shapes are polygons. They have lots of different sides. I don't know, I'm just going to make up some crazy looking shapes. Um, they're polygons. They're shapes that have a lot of different sides. Um, when you're creating shapes, you're also creating angles. That's if you got a protractor, which I don't have right now, um, and you measured these angles, you would be able to tell the degrees that they are. Now that's not something that you hit until you're a little bit older, but it is something that you may be asked how many angles are created. Um, it's just this space in between. So all of these little areas that I'm drawing on, those are the different angle measurements. This one is an obtuse angle. We've got acute angles. The only kind of angle that you really need to worry about um, for second grade is called a right angle. Now we have talked about this a little bit. Um, a right angle is the measurement here where you know it's worth 90 degrees. Now the universal symbol for that um, measurement of a right angle is it'll have like this little box looking shape there that means that it's a right angle so this is actually a, a particular triangle called a right triangle and I know it's a right triangle because it has this little square here meaning that it has a, a measurement of 90 degrees I don't want to go too far into that we will discuss that more when it comes up in topic 13 um, the next thing I want to talk about is our 3d shapes which are now going to be called solid shapes. So a lot of times we're going to hear them referred to as solid shapes. When I think of solid shapes, the first one that pops in my head is a cube. Um, a cube has lots of different faces, and we'll talk about that. It also has edges. Now, I'm going to show you how to draw a cube on a piece of paper. Um, first, you're going to draw one square, you're going to offset a, another square to the side. We're going to connect here, connect here, and then from this intersection, draw another line and another line at the top. Um, you don't have to be an expert on that. I just want to have a little figure for you to look at. Um, this is a cube. Here's another example. Um, this is the best thing that I've got over at my house. So. Here's a cube. We'll talk about both of those. But essentially, this is a solid shape. Um, this is how it would look on a piece of paper. Um, so for the cube, if I'm talking about the edges and the faces, um, when I'm talking about the face of a cube, it's just this flat area. So a cube has, let's count them. We've got one on the top. So one, one on the bottom, two. 
And then if I go all the way around the um, perimeter, one, two, three, four more. So four on the around, and then one on the top and bottom means it has six faces. So the few, the cube has six faces. And if I talked about the edges, I'm gonna just go ahead and um, erase the edges and we can count them and, and make sure we're getting the right number. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, that one's gone, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12. The cube has 12 edges. Now if I got my actual figure out as well, and I counted those, I just wanna make sure that I don't recount one of the, um, one of the edges because that's not gonna be an accurate representation for the cube. So I'm gonna start with um, the top. That's a little bit easier. I can count all four. One, two, three, and four. Um, now I'm gonna go around the, um, the perimeter. So we've got four, five, six, seven, eight. So I've gotten all of these and the ones on the top. All right, so we've got eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. This has 12 edges. That's what the edge is. It's just this flat area here. Um, and that's kind of what I need you to know going into topic 13. This is kind of the first part of our vocabulary. There are some additional vocabulary terms that we'll discuss, um, but this is what you need to know for right now. I'm just looking for where did I stick my paper. Um, coming up, there are um, other skills we're going to talk about as far as partitioning different shapes. And this is topic 13 vocab intro.